on to the state of the nation. These days on social media and even on uh, mainstream media, the much talked about conversation is about a self-proclaimed prophet called Jerome. The majority of Sri Lankans are confused with this individual. Why? Because they are trying to figure out when we have famous Christians like the cardinal and the usual priest whom we see wearing cassocks, who is this guy called Jerome and why is he calling himself a prophet and what does he have to do with the Catholic Church? Because for most Sri Lankans, when you talk about the Christian faith, the only thing that Catholicism is Christianity, which is utterly false. There is a multitude of Christian sects in the world which are called denominations, just like the main four sects of denominations in the Buddhist faith here in Sri Lanka, like uh, Amarapura, Malvatu, Askiri, and Ramanyam. Now, when it comes to the Christian world, there are main established denominations like the Catholic Church, the Anglican Church, the Baptist Church, and the Methodist Church. Now, these denominations have been in existence for more than 100 years. Hence, they are well-established churches. Yes, yes, yes. They all preach and believe in the same God. When God says unite, human says, hmm, why don't we go and separate? The denominations are honestly the most unchristian like way um, to worship the same Christ. Now, getting back uh, to our subject, Prophet Jerome comes from something called a free church. These churches are found in modern times by anyone for that matter. And in North America, these free church leaders are very influential, powerful, and more importantly, wealthy to levels you cannot even imagine. If normal people are parking cars in their driveway, these guys park jets. That's how rich they are. In Sri Lanka too, we find this free church concept taking a, a prominent role, mainly because it's very catchy, fashionable, and more modern. It's not like going to an age-old building, singing the same hymns, saying the same prayers, listening to the same sermons, and then when you walk out of the church, you go back to sinful life, doing the same sins day in and day out. The younger generation tends to lose interest in the old way of worship because the established old denominations are not so welcoming to the questions of the young, or basically, the church is not in the modern times. Even I had issues pertaining to the church when I was young. Why does Jesus tell, this is the question that I had when I was uh, young, uh, uh, Jesus uh, told a rich young man, which we read in Matthew chapter 19, uh, verse 21, to leave all his riches to enter the kingdom of God. And then on Sunday and in, in, um, you know, in church sermons and uh, services, all what you see is priests garlanded in golden robes and various expensive jewelry and telling the congregation, give all you have to the poor. I mean, practice what you preach, right? Anyhow, these days, Prophet Jerome didn't become the conversation of the day by questioning the established denomination, but more so making a statement about another religion on Buddhism. Watch. Their focus is enlightenment. But to be enlightened, you need light. The Buddha himself, the name Buddha means enlightened one. Ladies and gentlemen, what is greater? Light or enlightened? Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. So I tell you now, Jesus didn't say I'm the enlightened one. No, 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 no. Jesus came from a different wavelength. Jesus said I'm the light. So I submit to you. The Buddha was looking for light. He was actually looking for Jesus. This is why every Buddhist needs Jesus. This is why every Muslim needs Jesus. Well, now, his statement uh, was so blasphemous that several Buddhist clergy and uh, followers went to the CID to complain and an active investigation is ongoing uh, to determine whether there was wrongdoing on the part of Prophet Jerome. Not only um, these individuals went, but the president also said, uh, look into it. There are shady dealings in Prophet Jerome that needs clarity. For a simple example, he's very much attached to this individual named Prophet Ubud Angel, a British Zimbabwean televangelist. 
I know you don't become guilty just by association even though it looks like it. But then the riches surrounding Prophet Jerome's church are what's puzzling most. Prophet Uber Angel is implicated in several money laundering scams where he's accused of funneling gold out of Zimbabwe to clean black money. Prophet Uber Angel visited Sri Lanka many times at the invitation of Prophet Jerome. Watch. Joy is the oxygen of angels. The angels only enter environments of joy. Angels invade environments of joy. As soon as he mentions angels entering into the environment of joy, look who is walking into the auditorium. What was I just talking about? I said, in a joyful environment, angels will come. I just said it. And you see, my father did tell me one day, one day we will come without telling you. He said it to me. And I said, oh, okay, I'll wait for that day. But did I know it was today? <laughs> and I introduced to you my father, the master of prophecy, the godfather of the prophetic movement, the ambassador of ambassadors, the diplomat of diplomats. Hey! hey! The one and only major. There's not two. The prophet to all prophets. A teacher to all teachers. Angels learn from this angel. My one and only spiritual father. With this God, ordained surprise. The multitudes entered into an atmosphere of joy and experienced an incredible angelic encounter. And I want to thank my son, your prophet, the prophet of God. I love you so very much. Now, Prophet Jerome's statement about Buddhism not only sparked a conversation asking this pertinent question by many laymen like us who is under the impression that there's the freedom of speech protection uh, by our laws, but does that not extend to questioning the Buddhist faith? Mind you, Sri Lanka is a Buddhist nation. So let's get clarity on this. Joining me now uh, to get a better perspective is President's Council, Manohari Di Silva. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Now, there's a big conundrum here for us laymen. The very little Buddhist teachings I've followed, uh, mind you, sir, uh, I am a Christian and my apologies in advance if this sounds wrong. My confusion is that Lord Buddha taught about love, forgiveness and understanding and in an instant like this, we see an individual who's clearly misled, making an erroneous statement. Now, how come the law of the land is trying to punish him while the teachings of Buddha clearly says otherwise? Is the law of the land, when saying that it gives the utmost uh, place to Buddhism, following a different approach? According to the law, no citizens of Sri Lanka can criticize Buddhist teachings? Uh. Ma Ma Mahesh, the question is not whether uh, a person can criticize Buddhism or not. The question is, you cannot violate the law of the land. The penal code says whether it is Buddhism or whether it's Christianity or whether it's some other religion, you cannot uh, hurt the feelings of another. And if you hurt the feelings of another, or if you insult that religion and if 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 another person would feel that uh, his uh, religion is being insulted then the penal code provisions will intervene and it, it has nothing to do with buddhism it's the law of the land this the penal code was enacted long time ago it has nothing to do with Buddhism being the foremost, having the foremost place or that uh, this being a Buddhist country. This is the law and it applies to any religion. Either it's Buddhism, Christianity or Islam. If you hurt the feelings of somebody else, then you violate the law, violate the provisions of the penal code. That is the question. It has nothing to do with Buddhism. Absolutely. Uh, so now freedom of speech uh, is a question that I've personally grappled with. Uh, where is the line on that? When can we definitely say that someone has crossed the line and is no longer freedom of speech? Well, 
the f uh, your right ends when the other person's right begins. Now, uh, uh, you can exercise your right. You you have the freedom of free freedom of speech, freedom of expression, but certainly you cannot use your right to freedom of speech and expression to hurt the feelings of somebody else. Now, the uh, Article 15 of the Constitution very specifically says that on the ground of religious harmony, the freedom of uh, f those freedoms can be restricted. So uh, uh, th that is what uh, uh, that is what uh, the Penal Code has done. The Penal Code. Uh, uh, has restricted your freedom of re uh, uh, freedom of uh, expression to the to, to that extent. So, if you violate the law, then your your freedom of expression will uh, will end at that point. Indeed, uh, so now is the law regarding freedom of speech clear in Sri Lanka, or should uh, there be changes to it? And if so, what do you propose? No, freedom of, I think it's quite clear, uh, freedom is given in Article 14.1a uh, of the Constitution, so you have that right, but it is subject to restrictions. It is restricted by Article 15. In anywhere in the world, even if you take uh, international instruments, uh, there is no uh, uh, freedom which is uh, not restricted except very few uh, rights like freedom, uh, the right to life and so on. Uh, the 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 uh, the the right you must exercise according to law. So the law can prescribe the boundaries of which will determine your uh, so that is what the penal code has done so you can uh, freely exercise as long as you don't violate somebody else's rights indeed um, all right we have to leave it at that uh, that was president's council manoharaji silva thank you very much a short break now i'll be back with the close